you guys. 9 a.m. and we can continue. All right. So um, I think uh, in the previous class somebody mentioned something about the exam. The exam is still not uh, not next week. I think it's in two weeks. Just now I checked. So we still it's still reasonably far away. All right. So back to our material. So in the previous lecture we started discussing RC circuits. What's so special about those circuits? Uh, and the major point about that circuit is that uh, it's a first example where current changes in time. Up to this point, our currents all the time were constants, steady currents. And this is the first example where current and not just current, charges, potential differences, they all are, they're all functions of time. Right? Okay, so, and there are of course two situations. First situations. First situation, you want to charge a capacitor, so initially charge a capacitor is empty. You used a battery to charge a capacitor. Of course, you cannot charge it directly. You need to uh, put a resistor between them so that a current will be uh, reasonable, reasonable, right? And um, you would not damage your system. It's a case which we started discussing in the previous lecture, and now I will continue. In the second situation, when uh, a capacitor is full already, fully charged. In this case, you don't need a battery. And then you want to discharge it through, again, a resistor. Because if you just connect with the wire to electrodes of the capacitor, you most likely just damage the system, right? Uh, current will be too large. So that example, I mean, that situation, we discussed in our uh, recitation class, right? Okay, so we already discussed that. Um, some of you will discuss uh, today, right, in the afternoon. Okay, so let's finish uh, charging case. Right. So I will uh, switch to the uh, whiteboard. All right, so I reproduced what we had uh, in at the end of the uh, previous class. And so now we can start where we uh, finished. Where are my markers here? <clears throat> so as I said, charging situation. Okay, I need to remove all these magnets. I put them to save uh, pictures. Right. Charging situation, battery with uh, ideal battery uh, with EMF, right? Uh, then capacitor C and the resistor. Okay, I forgot to write down that. The resistance is R. Right. Okay. So we want to analyze it. What does it mean analyzing a circuit like this? In, th in this case, you need to know a uh, potential difference across a resistor, a uh, current in the resistor. Okay, current in the circuit. Current will be the same, right? And uh, all the parameters about a, a capacitor. Potential difference across a capacitor and charge inside of the capacitor. Again, all these four parameters are functions of time. And moreover, they are all uh, related. If you find any of these parameters, you can find the rest of them. So in this case, we, we will find charge. And then you, once you know charge, you can find this, you can find that, you can find that easily, right? OK. So uh, since all these, OK, somebody's mic is on. Um, all these parameters are functions of time. So how do we analyze these situations? We will. We need to look at some arbitrary moment of time t, and that's what we. Um, this situation is at some arbitrary moment of time t, and then we apply, started applying Kirchhoff rules. Since there are no junction points, so junction uh, rule is not applicable, and we started applying loop rule. So uh, we pick a direction current. Uh, we know we don't have to guess. We have uh, this electrode is positive of the battery. This electrode is negative. So current flows from plus to minus, right? And I picked a travel direction. And then we wrote down the uh, loop rule. So first you cross the uh, battery from minus to plus. You see travel direction. So contribution is positive. Then you uh, pass this. You, we passed the resistor, travel direction, current direction, the same. So contribution must be negative minus IR. And then uh, potential difference across a 
uh, capacitor, D capacitor, when we move this way, right, down, so this is the final point, negative electrode, initial point, positive electrode, of course, potential difference, V final minus V initial must be negative minus, right, and the absolute value of that potential difference, of course, we can write using uh, definition of capacitance C equals Q over delta V, or we can write delta V equals Q over C. And that's what uh, we ended up, right? And at this point, I told you in the previous class, so look, EMF, R, and C are given. Unknowns, current, and charge. Current and charge. One equation, two unknowns, it doesn't sound good at all, right? So mathematically, you cannot solve it. But of course, uh, you must feel that uh, this current and this charge must be connected, must be connected. Because uh, charge in the capacitor increases at the expense of the current. So there must be relationship between them, right? And at this point, we finished, right? I wrote down, let's connect uh, current uh, in the wire and the charge in the capacitor. Right? And now let's relate them. I already showed uh, the relationship between these uh, two quantities in the discharging situation, but this is the charging one. So let's do very similar uh, sort of uh, analysis speculation. All right. So first of all, let me call charge, when the charge inside of the wire, let me use Q small. So when the charge is in the wire, let's label it as Q. And of course, then uh, we can write a current as dQ over dt. So you remember the definition of current. You will take some arbitrary cross-section over here, for example, right? So cross-sectional area. Uh, observe it over the period of time dt. And of course, you can measure the amount of charge dQ. Let's say this charge. This charge dQ. You observe... Uh, this charge crossing this cross-sectional area over the period of time dt, if you take the ratio dq over dt, that's by definition current. We discussed it two or three classes ago, right? Okay, so that's, and of course, you remember, q capital, it's a charge in the capacitor, and q small, it's a charge in the wire, right? So let's keep track of that. Okay, so now, a few moments later, where will this charge be? Of course, it will come to the capacitor. Right. Of course, a few moments later, this charge will come to the uh, capacitor. Right. So this charge will be uh, here, let's say. So this is our dQ. So this charge arrived. As a result, charge in the capacitor goes up. This is simplest logic, right? So let's say room was, um, a room had 100 people and five more arrived. So number of people in the room uh, went up to uh, 105. So as a result, I can write simple uh, things, right? So I can write, so Q fine, you know what? Let me write something like this. So uh, DQ uh, arrives to the capacitor. So as a result, I can write Q final equals Q initial plus DQ. Initial 100 people, five more arrived. As a result, we have 105, right? Simple logic, right? So now, of course, we can write, uh, let me solve it for dQ. So it will be Q final minus Q initial. Right. Okay, now, for a second, forget about the simple logic. I will write just from the other side, from the other side, what is... DQ capital, by definition, D or delta, from the mathematical point of view, delta uh, X, it's X final minus X initial. In this case, a DQ, it's a Q final minus Q initial. Again, it's a completely different logic, right? So forget about this for a second. So just from the definition, DQ, it's a Q final minus Q initial. Q final minus Q initial. So now if you compare the previous simple logic, with this definition, you see that dQ small equals to dQ capital. dQ 
Q small equals T D to D Q capital. All right. Okay, that's what we have here. But in the case of discharging, there was a minus over here. Right. Okay, so now uh, we can uh, take this D Q small and use it in the definition of the current. So replacing this Q small, which is the charge in the capacitor, charge in the wire with a uh, charge in the capacitor. So as a result, I can write that uh, current equals DQ capital over DT. So this is uh, how charge in the capacitor and current in the wire are related. But again, in the case of discharging, there is a minus between them. And book usually, books usually explain something like this, right? For example, for discharging case. Uh, since current increases at the expense of the charge in the capacitor, there must be minus between them, right? Never liked it. As a result, I started, uh, I developed these speculations in order to get those pluses and minuses naturally out of simple logic, right? Okay, so now once we connected this with that, we can go back to our equation and rewrite it using this. Okay, so now let me write uh, back to back to the equation. Back to the equation, right? So this one. Let me frame it like this. And so what we have? EMF uh, minus, instead of I, dq over dt uh, times r a minus q over c equals to zero. So that's our equation. So now we have one unknown q, where, again, which is a function of time. First order differential equation. So now it's just a question of solving it. But you know what? Before we start solving it, let's make it look nice. Label something, right? Just, just pure cosmetic uh, changes. So first of all, I don't like that there is a factor in front of this derivative, right? So let's get rid of that. Uh, how can I do it? I will multiply the whole equation, the left-hand side and the right-hand side, by uh, 1 over r. Basically divide this side by minus r, and of course 0 by minus, one, minus r, right? So as a result, we will have dq over dt. Right, without minus because I divided by minus r, so this r disappears. Then uh, this we will have plus q over r c, plus q over r c, and this will give us minus minus e m f divided by r, minus e m f divided by r. Okay, and it must be equal to zero. You see here we have r c, and here we have r. Let's just bring to the common denominator, RC. I will just can I can just multiply this by C and this multiply by C. I'm not changing anything. I just multiply by C and divide it by C, so it's the same. Okay, and so now we see we have C. You see RC sounds so silly, right? So, but anyway, so we have here RC. Let's just uh, give it a nice name for this constant because who wants to drag this RC RC? Let's just, let's just call it tau. If you look carefully at the units, you will see that uh, product, the units of this product, uh, the units of time. So now let's denote tau equals to RC, RC time constant. Let me frame it. it. Right. Then, uh, we still, uh, it's still not clear what is EMF times C, right? Let's just, okay, I will probably move to this side. It will be easier. So now let's see what's the meaning of EMF times C. Again, it's just pure now cosmetic changes of this equation, right? So let me start from the definition of capacitance. C equals Q over delta V across C. Of course, I can solve it uh, for Q. Again, Q, it's a function of time. C times delta V. Again, it's a function of time. 
yeah, and just a definition, and then they just solve it for Q. So it's like this. Okay, C is a constant. We cannot change that, right? Uh, Q is a function of time, delta V is a function of time. So we can look at this expression at any moment of time. Let's just look at this expression at T, when T goes to infinity. If you wait long, long enough, right? You are charging this capacitor, and let's you wait, and you look at this system, I know, five minutes later. It's long enough most of the time, right? So what if, uh, okay, let me, this, T goes to infinity. What will be the uh, value of the charge? Q, uh, in that case, um, Q will go to what? Q maximum. We're charging the capacitor. If you wait long enough, capacitor will be just full with the maximum possible amount of charge. So let's just, in this case, Q will go to Q max. Let's just label it Q max. Right. And what will be the delta V when T goes to infinity? When T goes to infinity, basically pretty much uh, capacitor will be full. And the potential difference at that moment across the capacitor will be equal to the potential difference across the battery. As a result, current disappears, right? Because there is no potential difference, so current will not run. So potential difference across a capacitor is going to be equal to EMF, right? Delta V here and delta V there must be the same. So this will be EMF. So as a result, I can write, so uh, this will be just Q max equals to C times EMF. So EMF times C is just a maximum amount of charge in the capacitor. So now after this, we can write the final form of this differential equation in, which would look nice, ni which looks nicer, much nicer, right? So now dQ over dt plus, I think I wrote with plus, yeah. So Q minus, this is Q max, and divided by tau equals to zero. So that is the uh, final form of this first order differential equation. You cannot make it look nicer, right? Okay, so now probably some of you know how to solve this differential equation. It's quite straightforward, simple, right? So my solution you can find at the end of this presentation, right? It's, again, if you're familiar with uh, differential equations, it's very simple. If you're not, okay, just we're going to use most of the time the formula which we're going to, which I'm going to write after this. So if you solve this, you're going to end up with uh, this. Solution is Q as a function of time equals to Q max 1 minus e to the power of minus t over tau. So that's the function, that's the solution. Again, solution, actual solution is at the end of the presentation, right? So that's, okay, so let's plot it. Mm -hmm. So let me plot it right over here. So this will be, let's say, Q. Uh, this is time. And let's look at the limit, for example, when t equals to zero, t equals to zero, right, so over here, uh, this exponential will be e to the power of zero, which is one, one minus one, zero, right, so at the initial moment of time, the charge is zero, as it should be, right, as it should be, because uh, initially, capacitor was empty, and again, Q capital, it's a charge inside of the capacitor. Then, when t goes to infinity, t goes to infinity, this will be a very, very large e to the power to minus very, very large number. It's basically zero, right? Basically zero, and we'll have one minus zero, so it will be just Q max, Q max. So let me draw this asymptote. So this is Q max, right? And our function as a result looks approximately like this. That's how charge in the capacitor grows, right? So first it's zero, and then 
it asymptotically uh, reaches maximum value. Okay, then, uh, of course, what's the meaning of tau? Meaning of tau that are C time constant. So let's just plug, it's a tau is just a one particular moment of time on this scale. Maybe it's here, maybe it's here, right? Okay, so now let's uh, look, what if t equals tau? In this case, q at tau will be equal uh, q max uh, 1 minus e to the power of tau over tau, it's 1 e to the power of minus 1, e to the power of minus 1. So this you can easily calculate, so it will be q at tau equals uh, 0.63 q max. So basically what happens at that moment of time, charge in the capacitor reaches 63% of its maximum value. Basically, that's the meaning of tau. It's a moment of time when charge in the capacitor reaches its 63%. Okay, so let me, um, now let me use green maybe. So this can be, for example, tau, right? And at that moment, that's the value of the charge at that moment. Yeah, it's one of the most important parameters of RC circuit. So once you know that, you can characterize pretty much RC, RC circuits. You can compare different RC circuits, right? So if, uh, for example, uh, tau smaller of one RC circuit, what does it mean? Tau is smaller. It means that uh, capacitor gets charged faster or the same discharged faster if tau is smaller. If tau is larger, then, of course, uh, it will reach 63% uh, over a longer period of time. So it means that uh, capacitor charges slower or discharges slower. So tau is a very important parameter, which, of course, we have to calculate every time in order to analyze this or that circuit, RC circuit. All right. Okay, so that's the meaning. Just uh, tau appears naturally during this uh, procedure. And then the meaning? Moment of time when capacitor reaches 63, charge in the capacitor reaches 63% point. 63% point, 63 of its maximum value. So now, what's next? So we found this Q. Now, of course, what about current? And what about the potential differences across the resistor and across a capacitor? Uh, so, let me put now a new bullet, and so how can we find current? Again, current is a function of time. There. We just need to differentiate charge. But again, in, in the case of discharging, there was a minus over here, discharging. But this is charging case, so just derivative. Differentiate this function. Right. So, it will be... Uh, dq, again, it's a function. We have to differentiate function. Don't differentiate a particular number of the charge, a uh, particular number, right, which tells what, what's the charge at a particular moment of time. You need to differentiate function. Right, so what if you differentiate function d over dt q max 1 minus e to the power of minus t over tau q max times 1 differentiate constant, it's zero, right? And then uh, if you differentiate the second term, so it will be minus Q max. And when you differentiate exponential function, minus one over tau will appear, right? So minus one over tau. At this moment, of course, I expect that you're quite comfortable with differentiation, right? And you should be, right? Integration, okay, but in differentiation, and, of course, exponential function survives. It doesn't matter what you do with the exponential function. It, it stays there, all right? That's the beauty of an exponential function. So, uh, e to the power of minus t over tau, right? Okay, so now, uh, of course, we can minus and minus disappears. Q max, we can use this, c times epsilon. c times epsilon. And tau, 
it's a RC. And e to the power of minus t over tau. So you see, c gets cancelled. And emf over r, emf over r, that's the current at the initial moment of time. When you close the switch and current uh, goes filling up this capacitor. So that's the initial current I naught. I sub zero e to the power of minus t over tau. So that's behavior of the current. Okay, uh, in a second I will switch to the presentation, right, in order to discuss this function, how current changes with time. But before that, uh, we can also uh, discuss how can we find um, this, for example, potential difference across the resistor. So next bullet, delta V across R. Now it's a piece of cake. Because you know how current changes. So multiply current by resistor. The value of the resistor will be potential difference. Right. So R times I as a function of time, right? And then you can also uh, find, for example, uh, delta VC. I can put another bullet. Delta V sub C equals. So how can we do that charge? divided by C, right? Again, charge, we just found, right? So where is it? Uh, here, charge. So Q as a function of time divided by C. You see, as I told you at the very beginning, if you know one of these four parameters, quantities, you can find the rest of them easily. And that's, we found charge, oh, the charge. You can find current, you can find potential difference and potential difference. Okay, so that's the uh, discharging Oh, no, charging situation. That's the charging situation, right? And problems, problems will be just all the time about playing with these functions. Of course, I didn't feel like skipping because uh, during this derivation, we use lots of physics which we discussed before, right? And every time I feel like at this point, I can, I can, I can uh, spend like 15, 20 minutes discussing um, all these uh, physics. Right? Okay, so now let me... Uh, switch to the uh, slides in order to discuss behavior of this current, right? So we'll continue and then there will be, there will be sort of like a clicker question. Right, okay, let me check if I uh, mention everything which I was planning. Yeah. Okay, quickly switch it. Uh, that's what we just discussed, right? Uh, and so we've come to this point, right? And now if you plot it, okay, you will get this graph. So what do we have again? So uh, before t equals zero here, the switch is open, so there is no current, right? And uh, so what electrons basically sitting crowded in the, on a negative uh, electrode of the battery, right? crowded, hating each other, right, pushing each other, right, ready to run as far away from each other as possible, right? And then at the, at the t equal, at the moment of time t equals zero, you close the switch. And what do those electrons see? They see the uh, light at the end of the tunnel. Tunnel is sort of like a wire, right, uh, going to the capacitor. So capacitor is completely empty, right, free land. Of course, these electrons which are sitting there, uh, which sits there, um, which sit uh, in the uh, battery, of course, they will start running like crazy at the initial moment of time. So first, at the initial moment of time, current will be very large, right? Because they see that uh, uh, empty land and this empty uh, space. Of course, in, the, in terms of physics, uh, so potential difference uh, between the capacitor is zero, potential difference across the uh, battery is EMF. So there is a large potential difference, which of course will push electrons uh, towards the capacitor, right? So they will start running. Then, and you see the current first at the initial moment of time, current is very large, right? And then current starts going down. Why? Because those electrons which just arrived to the new world, empty capacitor, so what do those electrons uh, do? 
uh, they still repel electrons, other electrons, right? So now they will start resisting to the um, resist and uh, it will be more difficult for new electrons to arrive, slightly more difficult, right? It sort of reminds the situation uh, in New York in the 19th century, right? There are lots of uh, immigrants, right, coming so every day, right? And those who arrived yesterday now hated uh, new arriving uh, immigrants, right? Because there was a strong competition on the job market, right? So there was lots of troubles, fights, right? S small local wars, right? It was a big troubles because, and electrons behaves very similar. So those who arrived yesterday, <laughs> okay, or a uh, moment before, now hated uh, new coming electrons. Right? So as a result, uh, it's more and more difficult for new electrons to arrive to the capacitor. So as a result, current starts dropping. But of course, in terms of physics, potential difference becomes smaller and smaller and smaller. As a result, current starts going, becomes smaller and smaller and smaller. And eventually, of course, when uh, capacitor is almost full, of course, new electrons cannot arrive. Right? And uh, at that moment of time, potential difference across a capacitor and potential difference across the battery are the same EMF. So potential difference disappears and electrons stop running. Okay, so uh, that's what happens sort of in terms of physics. But you know what? A few years ago, I watched the, mo the movie, right? Um, it's called, uh, hold it, the far, far and Away, right? So let me just open it. I think it's, it's written. Yeah, far and away, with uh, Nicole Kidman and what's the guy, Tom Cruise, right? And there is one episode, The Land Run. And when I was watching this episode, I was quite surprised because behavior of people in that episode exactly the same like behavior of electrons in this situation. Okay, let me. Uh, bring the display okay the computer went to sleep let me wake it up All right um, so what's the story in this it's a uh, it's called like a what uh, the land run According to the history, right, that's how land in Oklahoma was distributed among, new, new far, um, among the farmers, right? So there was like a race, right? Uh, who get first uh, to the new land that's, uh, that, person he, uh, that person can claim? Uh, so this is my land, this is your land, right? Uh, kind of very unusual way of you know, dividing the land, right, uh, distributing the land. But according to the history, that was... Uh, that's what was happening, right? So let's look. Okay, I probably stand here. Let me go back. I, damn it. Up. Okay, so you see, at the initial moment of time, when gun fired, right, so at the initial moment of time, of course, there was no any uh, runners, right, so current was zero, but when the, but when the gun uh, fired, all right, so now if you look at the current number of people, okay, farmers crossing the imaginary cross-sectional area, of course, there will be very, very large current, the maximum possible, right? And then, uh, of course, then uh, if, uh, and the, but of course, with time it starts going down, right? Uh, if you, for example, um, look at this place, or maybe a few minutes later, right? Maybe three, five minutes later, right? Um, people might still come, but uh, their attraction towards the new land will be much smaller because chances of getting new land will be very, very small. Most likely, all the land will be occupied, right? So new family might come, right, and the husband will say, so what's the point of going there? It's, uh, it's completely full, right? And maybe after getting a punch from the wife, from his wife, he, will, he would decide to go. But if you look at this uh, place uh, half an hour later, 
Of course, even even wife would agree that there is no point of uh, going to the new land uh, in an attempt to get the new land, right? So current will basically become zero because there is no any attraction for uh, people to go there. So current becomes basically zero. So I was surprised, right? Basically, uh, behavior is uh, not, it's identical, identical. And then again, I don't want, okay, there are some reflection, right? Uh, yeah. Um, although, yeah, we're human being, right? We, we have brains, electrons don't have brains, but still lots of similarities between uh, social dynamics and dynamics of, uh, for example, electrons. And that's why uh, lots of uh, equations of physics are used uh, to describe social dynamics. For example, like uh, dynamics of uh, behavior of people on a stock market, for example, right? Lots of lots of equations are used to describe that. Right. Okay, so uh, kind of too, 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 too bright, right? Okay, it's enough. <laughs> Um, I'm afraid to uh, share a video, of course it's possible to share a video through the Microsoft Teams, but, but, uh, because this computer which school gives, right, it's not very powerful, just normal average, right? So when you run OBS, Microsoft Teams and PowerPoint presentation, CPU basically at, at, uh, runs at full power. So if, you, if I try to open video, I'm afraid that it will freeze my computer completely, right? So as a result, that's why I open the I open it this way. Right. Okay. So lots of similarities between uh, again, as I said, so social dynamics and dynamics of multiparticle system in physics. Right. <clears throat> All right. So now again, over sort of overlaying or right, juxtaposing. Right. So at initial moment of time when the switch is open. Yeah. That's the situation. People are waiting for the, uh, the sound of the gun, right? So when gun sounds, of course, race begins. So at, uh, at the initial moment of time, of course, current is the largest, right? So if you forgot about behavior of the current, just remember this episode from the movie. So at the initial moment of time, of course, number of people crossing the imaginary cross-sectional line, of course, will be the largest. And of course, with time, it will decay, right? because the land will be occupied and less and less people will be attracted to the new land, right? Because chances of getting something new will, will become next to zero, right? Okay, so that's what I wanted to uh, show you. And now, so what about the time? Okay, we still have uh, 10 minutes. So now the question for you. Again, I prepared uh, the poll in the chat. You can see that. I can see it. It's right in front of me. All right, so the story is this. A battery, potential difference is given. Uh, then there is a capacitor. At the initial moment of time, it's empty. So basically, the charging situation. And now, instead of just a resistor like what we had before, now it's a bulb. But what, effect, what bulb is effective? It's just a resistor, which can also produce light. But effectively, it's just a resistor. And so at the initial moment of time, we close that switch. And then, can you describe what happens to this bulb in terms of light production? Option A, no light. Bulb doesn't care. B, first it is bright, and then it gets dimmer and dimmer and dimmer. C, first it is dim, and then it, it gets brighter and brighter and brighter and kind of steady bright. Okay, uh, try it. Right. Um, again, the uh, poll is in the chat. Right. You can see it. You should be able to see it, I see it. And I can see that you started already answering.
Sorry. Um... Uh, professor, I don't think we can hear you. Sorry, yeah, I muted. I drank water, right? So whenever I drink water, I mute myself, right? And sometimes if I got unmute. All right, uh, so I was just speaking again about similarities between social dynamics and dynamics of multiparticle systems in physics. Even there is a special sort of like a direction in physics. It's called social physics or social physics, right? So where they just uh, compare these two, again, life and physics, right? Uh, and of course, uh, in that case, they use uh, lots of lots of uh, physics equations, ideas uh, to describe our life. Right? Again, especially uh, life as of the society. Right? And it shouldn't be surprising that, we shouldn't be surprised that there are lots of similarities. We, we're still part of the same world, right? So the same uh, laws of physics governs everything, right? Our social life and uh, life of multi-particle systems, right? Okay, it looks like um, we should, I should probably start discussing this question. Okay, so uh, again, as I said, it's just basically a uh, typical uh, charging situation, charging a capacitor, which we just discussed, except for instead of uh, just a resistor, which, couldn't, which cannot produce the light. Now we have a resistor which can produce light. And so we know the expression which can be used to describe this light production. It's just basically a bulb, you remember the previous class, it transforms, transformer, transforms, uh, electric form of energy into light, right? And of course, we're talking about, we can, we usually talk about power, right? So, and the uh, formulas for the power, you remember, uh, I times delta V or I squared times R or delta V squared divided by R. Out of those three, the best one will be, in my opinion, uh, I squared times R. R is the same. Again, we assume that uh, R doesn't change. Of course, it change, changes slightly, but let's assume R is constant. So as a result, power, power, basically amount of light produced by the bulb is proportional to the current, not proportional, proportional to the square of the current, right? Current flowing through the bulb. So basically, in order to answer the question, what happens with the power amount of light produced, we just need to look at the graph, how current changes in time plus it's a uh, proportional to the square of the current so the dependence will be even stronger all right so and current of course at the initial moment of time when you close the switch is the largest it means that the uh, power light amount of light produced by the bulb will be the largest so first it will be very bright okay we assume that it can survive that brightness right so and then of course current goes down and of course, power also goes down, right? So first it is bright and then it is dim, right? Okay, uh, the question is directly related to the previous um, discussion, but every semester I see that there are like, like today, today it was like 25%, uh, right? Uh, pick still the wrong option. They try to use their guts feeling. They feel that first current is uh, small. No, no, no. We just discussed, right? We watched the movie. Uh, and they usually tell, okay, guys, if, you're, if you forgot uh, the behavior of the current, just recall this movie, this episode from the movie, right? So first current is the maximum, and then it goes down, right? Okay, so the answer is uh, to do B, right? And most of you answer it right. Okay, a few times I used this question in one of the exams, right? A few times, not often, but a few. Again, I'm all multi multiple choice questions. Okay, so now enough about charging situation. Now, this charging case, you see I wrote, we discussed that in our recitation classes, right? So we already even solved uh, a few problems. So you should be, it should be enough. It should be enough. And uh, again, for this charging case, you, if you want, you can look at this, right? So I basically went through this in my recitation class, getting all this. Uh, the only major difference, so now current and the charge uh, in the capacitor connected through the minus.
connected to the minus. So we found the expression for the charge, and then you need to different in order to find current, you need to differentiate that, and don't forget about the minus. Right? As a result, uh, current uh, still uh, behaves in exactly the same way like the current in the charging case exponentially. First, current is large, and then it decays. Then the meaning of tau in this case, time constant. The meaning of tau, it's a um, the moment of time when charge or current in the wire or charge in the capacitor reaches 37% of its maximum value. Again, uh, tau can be used to compare different RC circuits. Okay, tau is short, okay, it charges or discharges faster. Tau is larger, capacitor charges or discharges longer, right? So tau is a very important parameter. Okay, so uh, uh, these uh, graphs, again, for discharging case, we're not going to discuss them, right? So again, you see exp now charge decays exponentially because first capacitor is fully charged and then, of course, it, um, it loses its charge. And current still behaves in exactly the same way like in the charging situation, right? And the, the meaning of tau, you see, at, moment of tau, at the moment of time tau, current is... Has, uh, is at the point of 37%. Okay, and now uh, more question. I think I also um, uh, created the poll for this. Yeah, also poll is there. So what do we have here? Uh, two RC circuits. And you see which case? This is a discharging situation. Oh, actually, discharging situations, right? In case A, uh, capacitor 6 microfarad, uh, resistor of 2 ohms, here 5 microfarads, and what's that? 3 ohms, 3 ohms. So which capacitor discharges faster? Case A, you see A, right? And uh, case B, right, you see. So which discharges faster. It's a discharging case, second case, which we discussed in our recitation class. And of course, on the exam, of course, I will never ask you to derive these formulas, right? Again, the goal, my goal was to go through these derivations because during those derivations, we discussed plenty of physics, right? Because of that, I only keep Algebra, I skipped. Not algebra, calculus, I skipped. But of course, you need to remember how, how to, get, to get, for example, current from the charge or potential difference. And that stuff is based on the physics which we discussed before. So what are the results? Okay, yeah, uh, still. Okay, so let me uh, start discussing because class is almost over, right? Uh, not much to discuss. Again, as I already mentioned a couple of times, if tau is smaller, it means capacitor charges or discharges faster. Right. Okay. So we just need to find both time constants. Right. So in this case, uh, R uh, two ohms F. I mean, um, cap C capacitance uh, six microfarads. So time constant will be twelve microseconds. In the second case, uh, five and three. So it will be fifteen microseconds. Of course, T tau one is shorter. It means that. Uh, case A, which is the first case, right, uh, discharges faster, discharges faster, right? <clears throat> so it's quite simple. Uh, okay, before we go, it's not a question, we're not going to poll it. So, for example, how can we find uh, time constant in this case? Now we have two resistors and one capacitor, because up to this point all the time we had one resistor, one capacitor. Use an equivalent resistance stuff and capacitance. So in this case, this resistor and that resistor are connected in series. You can easily find uh, equivalent resistance. In this case, it will be 4 ohms. And 
multiply it uh, with the value of this resist uh, capacitance, and you will get a uh, time constant. If you have more complicated situation like this, right? So you see you have a bunch of uh, capacitors, bunch of resistors, the same story. Uh, calculate an equivalent capacitance of this. Here you have two in series, then this and that uh, are parallel, right? Here are two resistors in parallel, and then this and those two are in series, right? So you can easily uh, find equivalent resistance on that side. And again, and then uh, just uh, uh, multiply R equivalent and C equivalent, and that will be the time constant of the whole circuit. Okay, thank you guys. All right, so at this point, at this point, we can say bye-bye to the electricity. So from the next class on Tuesday, we will start discussing magnetism. I thought I would be able to start um, to introduce some basic idea of magnetism, but actually it's nice. In the very beginning, next class, we will start with magnetism. And the, tears, the sacrifice of years, they come today to risk it all.